Hi, everybody. My name is Caleb Albers, and I'm an infrastructure engineer here at HashiCorp. Today, I want to talk to you about automating image pipelines with HCP Packer. And specifically, I want to peel back the curtain a little bit and talk to you about how we internally use the service to help automate our build, test, and release pipelines for machine images. And before getting too far, I want to take a step back and talk about CI CD at HashiCorp, because that's going to be a, a flow that really underpins a lot of this talk. So. At HashiCorp, it should be no surprise that we're really heavily fans of automation. We have over 2,800 GitHub repos, and almost every single one has one or more CI CD jobs that run, be it to test code, uh, perform builds and releases, or any number of other things. So what that equates to is that for our organization, we run about 70,000 CI jobs every month, and that corresponds to about 16,000 compute hours a month uh, for all of our runners. And to put that into perspective, that's just shy of two years of compute that we run through every single month. And on top of that, it's growing at a pretty high pace too. We've seen 22% increase in jobs just in the last 30 days. And more recently, there's been a push to consolidate all of our CI CD onto a singular platform, which is GitHub Actions. Now, one of the nice things that GitHub Actions does is it lets us run our own fleet of runners to take care of any jobs that come through. And we're able to put this on our own infrastructure and manage it, secure it, and tightly control it to our whim. And what this looks like in practice is people who are writing CI jobs for any of our different products or repos are able to just specify a self-hosted runner and then specify the type of instance that they want. So whether that be a specific operating system or compute size that's relevant to their workflow. And then whenever one of these jobs executes, it gets put into a job queue. Once it gets to the end of that job queue, it actually gets assigned to a runner inside the fleet that we manage to actually run that job. Now, here's the thing about that runner fleet. We have a lot of different combinations of instances. We're running three different operating systems, Ubuntu, Mac OS, and Windows, because we build and develop tooling for all of those platforms. And we're running a large multitude of instance sizes, even more than what's on the screen today, uh, just to make sure that different workloads have the power that they need to in order to run effectively and not take too long. Now, that's where I come in. I'm on the engineering systems team at HashiCorp, and it's our responsibility to build and manage this infrastructure, which is a project we started about eight months ago. We had a lot of requirements when we started scoping out this project. We knew that we needed to support multiple different operating systems. We knew we had some unique compliance perspective or compliance requirements from a supply chain security perspective, strict, uh, especially around strict VM level isolation and single use instances. So what that means is every time a job completes, that's the only job that completes on that instance, and then a new one gets spun up. We also knew that there is going to be a frequent cadence of updates in order to get the latest tools, security patches, et cetera. And then the big crux of this is the confidence and changes. So we needed the ability to tightly control what image was in each individual runner fleet and environment, whether that's development, staging, or production. We needed the ability to have control over scale uh, and scale it as demand evolves. I mentioned those 70,000 CI jobs that run every month. Those are increasing at a rapid pace. We need to make sure that we are able to scale that infrastructure as appropriate. And along with that, we also had some multi-region support requirements right out of the box. It is vitally important that these GitHub Actions runners are able to take on jobs at any time of the day, 24-7, 365 days a year, with as minimal downtime as possible. So in order to facilitate that, we automatically have geographically dispersed regions. And then we also have a future project for multi-cloud support. So take this uh, beyond just the AWS account that it's in today, but also take this to GCP, Azure, and other solutions as needed. Out of all these, there's one that's the most important, and that's confidence. We needed to have the utmost confidence whenever we're doing these promotions that the images that we're promoting work absolutely 100% of the time. 
Now, how do you achieve that confidence? For us, we knew that we needed controlled promotion. We knew that we needed to be able to track image metadata and know what specific software was installed on what image, just in case something does go wrong so that we can revert whatever that issue is. And we wanted a high degree of consistency around cloud providers and regions. We didn't want to have to manage um, promoting to GCP in a different way that we promote to AWS or anything like that. We also really needed a high degree of automation. So one of the things that really makes us feel better and sleep better at night is the fact that humans aren't involved in the deployment process. We don't have to worry about forgetting a step or just not having enough coffee that day. And another thing that really eased our mind for the confidence side is the, abil the ability to revoke images if something were to go wrong and roll back quickly if needed. And then being HashiCorp, we also wanted an easy implementation with Terraform and Packer because those are the tools that we're using for to build and deploy these images. So what did we end up building? Well, we created a build and deployment pipeline that had a few major stages. It all starts with a Packer build. So we have Packer images for all of the operating systems we build for Ubuntu, Mac OS, and Windows. And then during the course of that Packer build, we have a few tests that occur at the end just to make sure that all the software is installed and that it's the proper versions and everything else that we have constraint-wise but that wasn't really sufficient to us to make sure that the software was installed. We also wanted to make sure that it works too. So what we ended up doing is building out an integration test. What this actually does is once a Packer build finishes, it takes that Packer build, it spins up sample infrastructure, and then it actually runs a GitHub Actions job on that infrastructure that we spin up to make sure that it's successful. So this is truly a full end-to-end -end test of functionality of this image. Once we know that that's successful, we're in a stage where we're ready and comfortable to promote to development and staging environments. And this is where we really are able to see if there's any issues that maybe weren't caught in the integration test, dependencies that maybe don't work as intended or something like that, any edge cases that come up. Now, we do that for about a 24-hour period, and unless someone manually stops it, we automatically promote to production after that. And this entire build and deployment pipeline has served us really well, and it's also completely automated. It's built out on GitHub Actions itself, funny enough, um, and this really helps make sure that everything is consistent, that we have this deployment strategy. And this is where we also uh, started looking at, okay, we have this pipeline that we're going to use. How do we build this? How do we specify what image actually makes it into Terraform at the end of the day so that when we run a Terraform apply, the image that we just tested and know for sure is in a good state is what actually gets pushed to production. And now, there's a few different ways you can tackle this one. And fair warning, all of these are okay. And in fact, all of these are ways that we've used internally at HashiCorp in the past. So I'm going to just talk through some of the pros and cons and trade-offs that we considered when looking at all of these different approaches and tell you about the lessons that we learned in having implemented this in the past. The first option that's the easiest is using Terraform variables. So you have a very tight degree of control if you're specifying the exact machine image that gets deployed in your Terraform code via a variable. You also have granular implementation. So you're able to exactly know what image is being presented for AWS on a per region basis, maybe the same with GCP, other cloud providers. But this gets kind of unwieldy to manage because you have to supply these variables somehow. And so you end up getting this long list of variables and you end up having to make custom tooling to actually fill out what image gets put into this variable. So we kind of nixed this one from the get-go because this is frankly just too much work. Now, probably the most popular way of doing this right now uh, is using a data source to actually pull whatever the AMIs are that exist inside of a region. 
um, and maybe just filtering by name so that you're always getting the one that you're wanting. This works great. Um, it's very easy to implement and it'll typically do fine, except one thing. You don't really have tight control over image promotion. You know that this grabs the most recent image out of the ones that are built, but how can you guarantee that that image that's built actually functions as intended? And then on top of that, this is provider specific. You have to do the same option, the same kind of idea, but apply it differently depending on if you're doing VMware or AWS or Azure or any other cloud provider. So every cloud provider has their own way of rolling this. None of them are consistent. And we still don't get that tight control promotion that we need. Now you could expand this and take care of at least the promotion piece by maybe creating a, a tagging strategy across each cloud so that you tag your image builds with, um, let's say an environment tag or something that says that it is past whatever the test you want. And that works, but we're still doing this bespoke for every single cloud provider out there that we need to deploy our images to. So this still doesn't really work as well as we'd like. And that's when we decided to look at HCP Packer. So HCP Packer is a relatively new service. I believe it's still in beta at this time. And you can check it out today, but it really acts as the glue between Packer and Terraform. It's aimed at solving this exact problem statement that we ran into. It acts as the source of truth for image metadata. So every time you run a Packer build, it's going to actually upload information about that image and all the artifacts that it created to a registry that you can pull from via Terraform or API. And now before getting too far into talking about HCP Packer and how we used it specifically, I wanna go over some Packer terminology that's going to be very useful for this. First of all, you have the concept of buckets. Every time you have a Packer file, uh, all the artifacts that are originating from that Packer build are going to be in the same bucket. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence there. In our case, we have three buckets. We have one for each operating system that we build for, for this image. The next thing to keep in mind is an iteration. So an iteration is the output of a given Packer build run. So every time you run the command Packer build, it's going to create a new iteration inside of HCP Packer and store all of the information relating to that specific build command inside there. Now, build has a special terminology in HCP Packer as well. And specifically, it refers to the output of a single builder inside of a Packer file. So let's say that you're building in a singular Packer file for three different cloud providers and two different regions per cloud provider. You will end up for every provider that you have having an additional build inside that iteration. And I know that this may not make sense right now. I'm going to show a demo shortly that'll really solidify these concepts. But finally, there's one other thing that I wanna mention, which is a channel. A channel can be kind of thought of as a release label. It's applied to iterations. Um, and in our case, we have a release channel for development, staging, and production environments. However, you're not limited to that. You can create your own as well. Now, what does this actually look like? I showed those examples of pulling images in the past through different mechanisms for Terraform. I'm showing you some Terraform code now that implements that with HCP Packer instead. So what you end up with is you specify a bucket and a channel that you want. So in this case, we're grabbing our Ubuntu image and we're doing that for the staging environment. And it is going to give us the iteration. So the Packer build version that we want that meets this criteria. And then it's going to look up what the actual, in this case, AMI ID or just machine image ID generally corresponds to the cloud provider and region that you specify. So then we're just able to use that and pipe that directly into our um, AWS resources in this situation. Now, this is, incredibly, incredibly powerful. Because if you notice, I talked about it for um, being specific to regions. If I want to deploy this to a new region, it's as simple as this. 
I'm able to just update the region that it's pointing to, and that's all there is to it. And actually, that same thing provides to cloud, or same thing applies to cloud providers as well. Let's switch from AWS to GCP in this case. What this means is that you have an extremely high degree of reuse with respect to how you're retrieving these machine images. And HCP Packer really abstracts that entire problem set for you. So this has been phenomenal for making sure that our Terraform is easily able to adapt to a multi-cloud, multi-region strategy. And then on top of that, I mentioned that HCP Packer has an API. All of these automated tests that we're doing, it's all happening in GitHub Actions. We want to make sure that the image promotion is able to happen in an automated fashion too. Don't want someone to have to log in and manually say, this is the image that we're promoting today. So what you're able to do is actually just hit the HCP Packer API and say, hey, assign this iteration to this release channel. And then the next time you do a Terraform apply or plan, it's going to pull the latest iteration corresponding to that channel and make those changes. In order to help the, us out with that, we ended up creating just a small helper script that we're able to do. It runs in bash and it just basically wraps this curl command that you see here on screen in order to handle this image promotion. And this is what that looks like in practice. We have an image promotion job. After we do the build and the test, all that we really have to do is grab that iteration ID that corresponds to this um, promotion. And then we just hit the API and that's all there is to it. I think it would be useful to solidify this with a demonstration. So let me go ahead and do that. What I have over here is a demo uh, repo that I've put together. And at the end of this, I'll give you the link to it. This has a fully functioning demonstration for HCP Packer, and it very highly mimics what we use internally at HashiCorp to build out this pipeline. So what we have in this case is a Go web app. It's just a very simple web app uh, that displays some uh, a line of text, a hello world effectively when you hit it. And what we wanna do is we want to run this app on an instance in the cloud. And so we have a Packer file that builds this web app and then bakes it into an image. And then what we have is Terraform code that takes that image and then spins up an EC2 instance uh, with all of the other related infrastructure necessary in order to run that image. And then what we really have here, the, the important part, is we have a workflow. So we have this build and deployment workflow that actually walks through all those steps that I talked about earlier. We have the build stage, we have a full integration test, we have the promotion to uh, development and staging, and then we have the promotion to production as well. And what I'm going to do is actually demonstrate what that looks like. Before getting too far, I'm going to show you HCP Packer as well. I have an HCP Packer registry here. And what I'm going to do, show you the demo bucket that we've created. So what you'll see for this demo bucket is this bucket has a description relating to the actual images that are being built and stored here. And it has a few labels as well. So this allows you to have that same kind of tagging strategy that you may be accustomed to, but in a very cloud agnostic way. On this page, you'll see a list of iterations. So we've run Packer build on the same image eight times at this point. And for each of these, you can click in here, see what channel this image may be assigned to, as well as some information about the actual AMI or in GCP, a machine image ID, or anything like that that corresponds for the builds that are in this iteration. And finally, just to hit the point home, we have channels. So you can see that in this case, our development, staging, and production channels are all pointing at the same iteration. Now, what I'm going to do is switch back here to our uh, demo repo, and I'm going to go to GitHub Actions, I'm going to go to our build and deploy workflow, and I'm actually going to run this for us. As I run this, what you will end up seeing is 
an example of what this workflow looks like. Build, integration test, promotion development and staging, and promotion to production. I'm going to go ahead and jump into this build uh, step. And you'll see that what we're doing right now is compiling the Go application. And then we're going to run a Packer build that actually packages everything up. This looks fairly standard so far, but what this Packer build specifically has is a section of code that makes it integrate very tightly with HCP Packer. So you can see that our Packer init is complete. We've started a Packer build and through the magic of video editing, our Packer build is completing right now. What's going to happen here is we're going to retrieve the Packer iteration ID from the Packer manifest that's outputted to through this Packer build. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the integration test job. What this integration test is going to do is it's going to use that Terraform code that I mentioned earlier, and it's actually going to spin that up. It's going to wait for that web server that we created to become available. It's going to hit the health endpoint that I've created for that web server. It's going to make sure that it's in a good spot. And then once that's the case, we can have a pretty good idea that our app is functioning as intended. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll clean up that infrastructure at the end, just to make sure that we're not paying for stuff that we don't need to. So you can see that we successfully created our infrastructure. We're now running an integration test. Looks like the service is still kind of coming up. We're going to wait just a few seconds and it should be here soon. And we're here. So our service is up, it's available. And as a result, we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning up that Terraform infrastructure that we spun up. Once this is the case, we have a pretty good idea that our image is acting as we want. And I feel comfortable promoting to development and staging. I'm going to give this a second to finish cleaning up and then we'll move on to what that promotion looks like. Now it's ready for the step for promotion to dev and staging. What's going to happen right now is a very small CI job that actually takes that iteration ID. And now that the integration test is complete, it's going to hit the HCP Packer API and promote that iteration to development and staging. If I go back into HCP Packer and refresh this page, what we're going to end up seeing is that the new iteration is assigned to both development and staging. So you see our production is still on the older iteration, but iteration nine, which is the newest one we just built, is successfully in both channels. If I go, I can jump into version nine, you'll see it again here, and I can see that we've built a new AMI in US West 2 for AWS. Now, what I went ahead and did here, in our actual production environment, we have a 24 hour delay between development staging and promotion to production. However, in this case, this just needs a manual approval as this is just an example workflow. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is what everybody does and say, looks good to me. And we're going to approve and deploy. Once this is the case, very similar to this other promotion job, this one will do the exact same thing, but it's going to do it to production. And it looks like we just completed that. If we go back to these channels and refresh our page, what you're going to end up with is that we have the exact same image for development, staging, and production. At this point, if you run any Terraform plan or apply and you're pulling from these channels, you're going to pull the latest validated image that we've created. Now, to reiterate, what we have here is a true image automation combining HCP Packer and GitHub Actions. So we're using HCP Packer as an image registry for multi-cloud, multi-region support. We're storing metadata about each image, such as the software version of all the tools installed on that image. And we're using release channels to control tightly what images get promoted and deployed into specific environments. On the GitHub action side, we're using that to actually automate all this. So we're automating the Packer builds. 
we're automatically handling any infrastructure that we need under the hood for our Mac OS builds. That means managing dedicated hosts for AWS. And we're also handling the actual image promotion technique through this as well. Now, I wanna make sure that you're able to go back from this and implement this at your own company. So I wanna provide you with a few resources here. First off, code. All of the code for the demo that I presented today is fully available, it's open source, and it's in a GitHub repo that I've created. So please feel free to check this out, use this to your whim, adapt it to fit what your needs are in your specific company, because everybody has different implementations, requirements, things like that. Secondly, the recording for this and the slides will be available uh, at the HashiTalks website. So you'll be able to see that and view our discussion post that actually has the slides. Um, also, we have a lot of really good documentation around HCP Packer. So this is available at our cloud.hashicorp.com slash docs slash Packer. And finally, feel free to reach out to me anytime on LinkedIn or on GitHub as well. My name is Caleb Albers on both, so it should be really easy to find. With that said, I appreciate you joining today. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much. Goodbye.